Once you were old enough what were the dark family secrets you were finally let in on? Got a Facebook message from one guy asking if I was related to my dad, since it is not a common last name, I thought he was a fan of his work, because I was in college at the time and the guy was about the same age as me, and that is how I found out my dad slept around and that I had a half brother the same age as me. My grandfather killed his youngest brother to get out of going to Vietnam, he, his brother, and two of their friends had their numbers called in the draft for Vietnam, they didn't he want to go, obviously, but they didn't he come from money and all worked to support their families, if they got arrested they de lose their jobs and their families would lose their income, so they decided on a different plan to get out of going, they would drive to get their medical checks together, and on the way there they would drive the car into a tree, the plan was to get too injured to get sent to war, but not so injured as to be permanently crippled and it had to look like an accident so nobody got arrested, this was in country western Australia, so they were all going to say they swerved to miss a kangaroo, and hit the tree, my grandfather was driving, his friend was in the passenger seat, and the other two were in the back, his brother was behind the passenger seat, they hit the tree doing about 40 kph enough to be serious, a broken leg for my grandfather, a broken arm for the guy behind him, and broken ribs all around, they definitely weren't he going to war. The problem was that for maximum impact, and because this was rural Australia in the 60s, they weren't he wearing seat belts, and nobody found them or their car for an hour or so, and nobody considered internal injuries in this plan, and my grandfather's brother bled to death from a ruptured spleen in the back seat, he was dead before they got to a hospital. My grandfather never forgave himself, and he never talked about it. My grandma was the only one he ever told, as far as we know, and she didn't he tell my mother and I until long after his death. We found a small box in their bedroom when we were cleaning out the house after she died last year. It had a clipping from the local newspaper at the time about the accident. It said that they had swerved to miss a roo, and called it a tragedy. I don't he think my mother told any of her siblings, so technically this is still the family secret. I guess now you re all in on it. My grandfather got out of serving in Vietnam by robbing pharmacy s and going to jail for years. Not very much a secret, but took me until I was older to understand what was happening. My mom would sometimes have us play a game called army which consisted of me, my mom, and my siblings army crawling around our apartment, kind of a hide and seek style game. She would yell hit the deck, randomly and we would all drop and find a hiding spot. We would giggle and giggle while my mom army crawled around looking for us. We loved the game so much, I realized a few years ago while retelling the story that we lived in a really terrible neighborhood, and she would yell it out when she heard gunshots outside the building. I am assuming she was worried about stray bullets. Edit I shared everyone's amazing comments with my mom, and she shed a tear. She feels very appreciated on International Woman's Day today. When I was about 10 my cousin and his dad died, I always thought it was an accident and on the same day, when I was old enough I was told that his dad actually committed suicide and my cousin followed him couple months later, truly devastated me although I didn't he know them well, edit thank you for the warm words and also for sharing your similar stories with me. I v read all the replies, my grief is still there because I understand that with professional help both would maybe still be here today, it just wasn't he common to seek help back then, I hope all of you are well. That my cousin was actually my half brother, mom got pregnant in college and my aunt and uncle adopted him, and that my dad was not my biological father, mom and dad got divorced, she got pregnant by another man and my dad was not able to have kids of his own so they got remarried and he raised me as his own. My uncle is believed to have murdered two Australian police officers in the late 80s. Mine is more cool than horrifying on the sense I am proud of this one. My grandfather was an amazing guy, he was a sniper paratrooper in World War II, always refused to talk about the army. I learned later that he was dishonorably discharged after injury. Turns out the sergeant in his squad was an absolute bastard, he had to go behind enemy lines to set a post up, and the plane was flying too low for a safe jump, 
he protested it to the sergeant who proceeded to shove him out of the plane after calling him a coward. Both my grandfather and his spotter partner were seriously injured in the landing. His partner never knew him was paralyzed and lost a leg. My grandfather broke both of his, his arm, hand, and some ribs. They both were rescued shortly after and taken to a military hospital. That's not what got him discharged, though. Turns out the sergeant showed up to visit them in the infirmary, and my grandfather punched him square inches the face with his only good hand. Twice, if his only army buddy we ever knew is to be believed. He was also visiting at the time he floored the bastard. After that, and on top of his injuries, the army sent him home for the rest of the war. We found out later after he passed and we had to go through his stuff a bunch of newspaper and article clippings about the folks involved he had kept. The sergeant was also discharged after a similar incident cost the lives of two other members of his squad a year later that weren't he so lucky. The man apparently drunk himself to death years later. We found all these written but unsent letters to his sergeant. We found photos of my grandfather's squad and the two that died with him. It was heartbreaking. I never knew any of this. He was such a fun, kind, and goofy guy you'd never think anything like this would happen to him. Now I knew why my parents always said never to bring my up the army around him. Miss you grandpa, I'd have punched the bastard too. Not so much letting on, as we found out by accident, but apparently my dad's first love in him got into a serious car crash when he was 25 and she died. He lived with her father for years after her death, he still occasionally comes to visit my dad, even 30 years later. We were always told he was a mentor until my sister pressed my mom on this subject. One of my sisteress is even named after the girl that died middle name and we never even knew about her until last year. None of us have ever brought it up with him. When I was young I thought it was really nice that my nana lived with my aunt and her family since she was getting on a bit and it meant she was looked after and there were always people around and has six kids. Occasionally aunt would gripe about being the one looking after nana since and is also one of many kids and being young I sympathized but given they all spent loads of time with nana too did not think it was a big deal you do not think about financial responsibility when you were young I think, just social and caring. Well it turns out the reason Nana lives with aunt is because aunt and her husband convinced Nana to put the house in their name so they could look after her affairs and sold it out from under her and invested the money in a pyramid scheme so it is gone now. Because of this her siblings refuse to give aunt a penny towards looking after Nana since it is her fault Nana has no money or assets and instead pay to take Nana out all the time. Meals, shopping, activities so she does not go without but they let aunt struggle under the weight of Nana's general living expenses. Aunt's kids are all independent now so they are not going to be impacted by money problems. Now I look back at her griping with annoyance and think what a terrible person she is. Grandpa had 13 siblings, of those 7 women are still alive, once a year they have a sister day where they all except one are going somewhere to have fun, they've been doing this since they were teens, all but one sister, who has been lied to her whole life about sister day, because she thinks it doesn't exist, this is supposed to have been started when that one sister borrowed something and didn't give it back, or something trivial like that. We are all reminded whenever we all get together pre-pandemic that we re not to talk about this, because it will hurt the sister. Still can t wrap my head around how backstabbing bitchy some family members of mine are, because this is just stupid. My father met my mother in the Philippines when he was stationed there in the Navy. He married her there and conceived me. He went away to finish his tour of duty. My mother moved to America when she was a month away from giving birth to me. She moved in with relatives in Texas. My father est her ended while he was in Hawaii. He met a woman there and called my mom in America, asking for a divorce. He wanted to take back his recent marriage to her with a kid on the way because he had a hot one night stand. My mother was already scared, being in a new country, not knowing much English. Add to this that she was pregnant, about to give birth, and her husband was dumping her. 
My Texan uncle got on a plane to Hawaii, prepared to kick my father's ass. He somehow talked my father into being a man and taking responsibility for his wife and child. The fact that the fling dumped his ass surely helped. He was back by the time I was born. I learned all this when I was 11, around the time my parents got divorced. It was only the first of countless dark family secrets I would come to learn during my teenage years. The reason I had a live and babysitter when I was 5 that moved in at 2 a.m. was because my mom's cousin killed two kids and we ended up harboring his daughter during the trial. He is the only person on death row in my county. My grandma retired and she still decided to work for her brother in his restaurant to save up money for her when she dies. Funerals are, obviously, expensive. She insisted he would hold on to her paychecks and pay for her funeral when she dies. He never did. That my favorite cousin was not missing. All I knew growing up he was 13 years older than me was that he would come and go a lot. He lived with us when I was a baby and after he moved out he would visit every 6 months or so out of the blue. But we never visited him or called him. His visits were one of my favorite things in the world. I loved him like a brother. By the time I was a teenager I did understand that he had issues with his parents. They had kicked him out at 13 and my parents took him in. But that kind of childhood messes with you. In between visits to my parents he avoided the rest of the family, moved a lot, and did not hold jobs for long. Which is why my parents did not always know where he was. But in my later teens he stopped coming over at all. I asked repeatedly if anyone had heard from him and I was told number. I asked about contacting him and was told, no one had a number or address for him. He would come around when he felt like it, but it stretched on for years. I really worried he was dead, and I really missed him. In my later 20s I finally found out that everyone knew where he was the whole time. He was in prison for murder, from what I hear it was actually somewhat justified. He was defending his new wife, who I never got to meet. I also found out some super shitty things about how the extended family sided with his ducked up parents and refused to help him or his wife when he got arrested, and that they shamed my dad into not helping either. I tried to send a message to him in prison but I do not know if he ever got it. I wish he knew that I did not turn my back on him for decades like everyone else did. I just did not know. My grandmother tried to murder my grandfather when she got sick of him beating the shit out of her every day. She swung an axe at him and he blocked it with his hand and lost his thumb. She left him before I was born. My uncle was raped as a young boy and my grandparents not only did not believe him, but beat him and disowned him for bringing such lies into our house. Sad thing is, I was raped as a kid and while dealing with that my dad told me what happened to my uncle I assumed so I did not feel so alone. My uncle is still the only one I know personally who has experienced the same trauma as me. And I am not meant to know so cannot talk to him about it. Edit typical this has blown up edit. But seriously, whoa. However, I am not gonna bring up someone else's trauma to them. I am particular in who in my life I tell. If I knew someone I trusted had been telling other people I did be v hurt by that. So not gonna do that. Thank you to those sending some love. I am not alone now though. I have people I can talk to which is nice. Going to be starting a group thing at therapy where I will be able to speak to other abuse victims. I think that will help too. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more of Reddit Universe.